Hey everybody, today on Rotor Runs we're approving a prototype of series. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well, then welcome to Ceres, which is a dwarf planet or oversized asteroid that is orbiting the sun somewhere between Mars and Jupiter. In fact, you can see there's Mars off in the distance. And we are just part of the asteroid belt. There's the rest of the asteroid belt that we have come here to mine, mine, mine. We want all those precious uh, minerals and resources. And so each player has their own uh, company, their own corporation, and uh, we are going to be seeing who can get the most out of series and the asteroid belt. I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run-through. I am the orange player. Jen is the purple player. And as part of setup, I've got four space bucks. I've got four credits, one alloy to build with, and one ice. The most valuable of the basic resources. I don't have any ceramics, any ore, or any excess power. Oh, and by the way, folks, remember, this is a prototype. Apparently, um, in this prototype, they ended up having to do these kind of amber ore um, markers, but in the real game, this will look more like ore. If you want to know what the real game looks like, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner screen to go check out the crowdfunding page. Um, also, along those same lines, this board is very very shiny. I have tried to cut down the glare, but it is a very shiny board. I have confirmed with the developers the final version will not be very shiny and super reflective like this. So, uh, bear that in mind. Anyway, though, this is a worker placement game. We each have five leaders, which let us go uh, talk to the Martian Council, uh, start construction projects on series... Uh, hire more contractors and engage in trade with the uh, ships that come through regularly every year. This game takes place over three years. A year is over once everybody has used all their workers. But not only our personal workers that we can send to different spots all over the place, but this common pool of workers sitting over here in the living quarters. This is a really interesting twist on worker placement that I've got my own personal ones that are going to you know, be fighting for uh, getting into the right place at the right time out on the main board, but then then we've got these other workers that we all have access to that we can send to our own private facilities that we built. Now, at the beginning of the game, everybody has access to the same four facilities. We each have a launch site, main factory, main lab, and main office. But there's plenty more facilities to build. And the more we have of these, the more of these workers we can use. So, I'm the first player. What am I going to do? Well, I would like to build some stuff. I could come right out here to the construction yard, and I'm tempted to because there is only one ice lab. There's more of them in the deck. These might show up later, or this might be the only one we ever see. And this is a particularly good one. This is a jack-of-all-trades. The ice lab generates ore and ice and ceramics when I use it. Plus, it's worth three victory points when I build it as well. I need um, one ceramic and one uh, alloy to build it. And it will give me ongoing income for the rest of the game of power. This is a real jack-of-all-trades. I'd like to build that. But before we actually get going, folks, there is one step we have to do at the beginning of each of the three years of this game. We have to update the asteroid field because these asteroids... They're always moving. And then we have to get some basic income. So the way you update the asteroid field, there's a little arrow here that indicates that everything goes uh, counterclockwise. I rotate the main field. Oops, by the way, should have been like this. You can see how it lines up with these. Okay. So I rotate the main field once, the inner field a second time, or the middle field, and then the inner field a third time. So at the beginning of every year, it's going to rotate. This one, uh, which is closer to the sun and therefore orbiting faster, is going to rotate a bunch more than the outer ring. Now, these and these asteroids, uh, Massalia, Psyche, Heb, um, all of these different asteroids are very easy to get to right now if we want to launch our mining um, contraptions up there so that we can start getting more ore and points. These ones are a little bit further away, and these ones that are not in our immediate, we can get to these as well, but we have to launch and then go laterally, which means we have to pay more resources. We will be launching um, jobs. We are here to mine these asteroids. But um, before we do that, at the beginning of the year, this always rotates and we get our income, which means we have to look at our um, buildings again. At the beginning of the game, everybody gets the same income. 
Our launch site gives us two ore. Our main factory gives us one ceramics. Our main labs gives us one power. And our main office gives us one influence with the uh, Martian Council. So but, um, Jenna, she has the same buildings over there. So we both got one influence. We both have two ore, one ceramic, one power. Now, we don't have any ice generation here at all. And ice is arguably the most important resource in this game. It's what we break down to actually launch, uh, you know, to get fuel to launch to all the asteroids. And again, that's why I'm really eyeballing this. There is an ice mine as well, which is also very nice because, hey, it generates two ice. Uh, plus, it has a passive income of one ice. But I kind of like this because this just has a whole bunch of stuff it does for me. Although, it is a bit more expensive to use. Uh, when I want to work this, I've got to pay some money to get all of that stuff. Huh. You know what? Actually, boy, I didn't realize this. There's only one ice mine as well. Yeah, I definitely want to build. I want to um, secure a supply of ice so that I can launch more ships and start mining more. So you might think that means, oh, well, hey, I'll take my... Now that we're ready to go, we've all gotten our income based on the buildings we have. The uh, asteroid belts have updated. I could be the first player and go to one of three spaces. If we were playing with more players, there would be four or even five spaces available. But in a two-player game, there are only three spaces. So I probably want to rush right out there and build because Jen she has the same stuff she could build as well but I think I'm gonna risk it a little bit because over here I can do scientific research and if I in research different way building techniques I can upgrade and get more and more resources bonuses every time I build so I think if I'm gonna be a heavy builder in this game and build a lot of stuff so that I can use more of these workers then I probably want to uh, invest in some research. So how do I do that? Well, that means I'm going to have to activate my main lab, which when I activate it, is going to give me one power. And if I want to give up some ice, it'll give me more power. And then I'll be able to do the research. And so this is a red building. To activate this, I don't send my leader out here. The leaders don't actually do the real work. The leaders just do all the management. If I want to do real work, I've got to grab one of these uh, workers from the living quarters. Uh, there are a number of these in each of the four colors equal to the number of players. So we're playing a two-player game. There's two reds, two blues, two greens, and two grays. More of them will be showing up on um, shuttles that visit every year. You can see in the queue, we've got a green and a gray that have shown up this year, ready to work. Next year, we've got a red and a gray. And then in the third and final year, we've got two blues. But that's for the future. Right now, I need to get that lab to work. So I'm going to take this red, put them to work, and I get one energy. And again, if I give up some ice, I get a second energy, and then we do the research. Let's do it. I will take two energy. One, two. I will give up one ice to get both of those. So I'm lower on ice. Ice just makes everything better on this planet. You need it. Uh, it's water. It's what keeps us alive. It's our fuel, etc, etc. So now I've got three energy, which is the best I can get right now. And I will do some research, which means, let's take a look at this. For any of the three research tracks, the first step up requires two energy, and you'll get two points. So I'm going to get two victory points. I'm going to spend two of that energy I had, so I'm back down to one, and I can increase my ability to launch missions to the, you know, mining equipment to the asteroid belt. I can increase my ability to build, which is what I'm going to do, or I could increase my ability to engage in trade with the uh, shuttles that show up every year. This is the what I'm investing in. I got two points. I've lost my energy. And what this symbol means is, from now on, every time I build any building, I immediately get the passive income that nor the icon in the top right corner that normally you only get at the beginning of the year. So this is going to be producing, well, I still have to decide. Uh, my next turn is I'm going to build the ice lab or I'm going to build the ice mine, which means I could just be getting more pat. I could get some immediate more ice or some more power. If I get another power, I'll have two power. I could do another research and jump up my launch ability as an example. But we're going to write that later. Worry about that later because my turn is over. I activated one of the common pool of workers and now I cannot activate my main lab again. It's occupied. There are ways to get around that. Uh, the game gives you a lot of flexibility. But for now, if I were to grab another red worker, I wouldn't have any place to put them to work. 
But what if I build an ice lab? Then I'd have a place to put them to work, wouldn't I? So anyway, let's um, worry about that later. It is now Jen's turn. She's in the same situation as me. She's got all these leaders. She has access to these workers. The workers can work in her buildings or facilities. The leaders can go out on the main board. And I think Jen, hmm, Jen is not going to mess around. She says, we're here to mine, I'm going to mine. And she's looking at all of the different asteroids that are readily available, that you won't have to spend extra ice to get deeper into the asteroid field or farther afield. And this one, Fortuna, hey, what's in a name? This one gives four ore, as opposed to um, you know, one ice or two ceramics, etc., etc. Jen wants to set up shop there and just drown herself in ore. Uh, you know, there's two ore over here on Psyche, and um, you know, setting up on Psyche will give her three points in two ore, whereas Fortuna will give her four ore and only one point. Right now, she cares more about those resources than she cares about those points. So Jen wants to blast off. We each started with um, one, uh, you know, mining rig ready to get blast launched. And so, how do we launch? Well, once again, that's activating another one of our buildings. It's specifically our launch site. This is a gray, therefore it needs a gray worker. And right now there are two gray workers. So Jen's going to do this. And she gets two ore immediately. She can give up ice to get two more ore. Or her choice, she doesn't have to. And she can launch. Right. So Jen will go on ahead and get that two ore. One, two. And I think she's going to hold on to her ice because she's planning on getting a whole bunch more ore over there. So she's not going to pay. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You know what? Hold on. I think Jen has a better idea. She's going to wait on that a bit. In the same way that I made an investment to make building a more profitable, lucrative thing for me, I think Jen wants to make this a bit more lucrative for her as well. Yeah. Okay, so she didn't get any ore. She hasn't launched yet. Instead, instead, oh yeah. Jen is going to grab a green. These are bureaucrats. The, the red are the scientists. The blue are literally the blue collar workers. The, um, the gray are, um, you know, gray collar workers, I guess. Anyway, though, um, Jen's going to uh, put this over here in her main office. She gets immediately one more influence with the uh, Martian Council. And if she wants to spend two coins, she can get another influence, which she will do. She wants more influence, which will pay off later. And now, later has come. She is going to get a favor from the council. That's what this symbol is right here. Let's go on ahead and zoom in on the council area. Um, so you could actually get this favor by coming over here and using one of your leader workers. But Jen figures, hey, you know what? She might get another favor later. Right now, she decided she wanted to grab one of those green workers while they're still there. Because, you know, if I, I mean, I have the opportunity to build, use a green and maybe uh, Jen can see I'm going to build. She knows I'm going to build next because I just invested in building. And if I build a green building, the green workers might disappear sooner than later. So Jen figured, hey, you know what? I could use my own leader for this, but instead I'll use one of my workers. And in doing that, she ended up gathering a lot more, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the influence. And that's good because she needs all that influence to buy this favor. This costs three influence. So the one she got from her income plus the two more for running her main office has been spent. And now for the rest of this first year, Jen is the ice queen. Whenever she has to do anything that involves ice, she gets a discount. And so she wants to do lots of ice-based endeavors for this year to make uh, to take advantage of this. We'll just go ahead and put this over there by her buildings. All right. Which means, you know, if she activates this building, this building, and this building, she does not have to pay extra ice to get Get the bonuses. I had the option to pay, and I did. I spent extra ice to get more energy. Jen, she's got ice coming out of her ears. Okay, so that was her turn. She activated her office, which she now cannot activate again unless she finds a way to get this green fella out of the way so another green fella could be sent there. All right, back to me. My turn. Now I'm going to build. I send my leader over to the construction yard. I pick what I want to build. And I think, yeah, I'm going to stick with that ice lab. I mean, the ice mine is tempting. The ice lab is more expensive, but that variety it gives me, that's definitely going to pay off. All righty. 
Um, so let's go on ahead and grab the ice lab. So in the top left corner, it tells me how much it costs. This costs one alloy and one ceramics. All of these things always cost some combination of alloys and ceramics to build them. So my leader says, hey, build this. And I just go on ahead and put this over here with my other existing buildings. I've left all this space. If Jen starts building, I'll have to make her some room. She, I guess her pieces can move off the board. But anyway, so I have built a building. Right. Now, at the beginning of the next year, I will passively earn one extra energy. So this is going to give me two energy over the course of the game. But more importantly, if I send a red worker here, I can spend two coins and get uh, all of these goodies. Also, right now, I just scored three more points. Woohoo! I am on my way. So, that was that. Oh, but wait! Oh, but wait, because I made that investment in, um, in research for uh, you know construction, I get this energy right now. I don't have to wait for that energy. I just got it straight away. And so I am done. And now I've got a second red workshop, which means I've got some place to send this other red, um, uh, what do you call it, scientist, engineer type to get to work. My turn is over. Jen can see that I would very much like to take advantage of that to use my brand new ice labs. And Jen says, oh, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. Jen grabs the other red and very quickly, this was not her plan originally. She was planning on launching, but she could see that, well, hey, if she doesn't grab this red, it's going to be gone because I'm going to grab it because I have two red worker placement spots. Jen says, well, it's time to run the lab. And boom, just like I did, she gets one energy. She can give up some ice. No. She doesn't have to give up the ice because she's the ice queen. So she doesn't have to give up any ice to get a second energy. And now she gets to do some research and she will invest in um, making launching because she's planning on launching very soon. More attractive. She gets two points for that and that cost the two energy she just made. Okay, so that's going to pay off. Every time Jen launches for the rest of the game, she, as a side benefit, gets two or one ice, one ceramic, or one power. Her choice. That is very nice. And now we're back to me. And now I am bummed. I can see, not on the shuttle that's in dock right now, but in year two, another red is going to show up. So we'll potentially have between us three red workers that we can use. And I've got two red worker spaces and Jen's got one. So you might think, oh, this isn't going to get used at all anytime until then. But you'd be wrong because I'm going to send one of my leaders over here to the Contractors Association. Let's take a closer look at this. And you can see, if you do this three times, you got to spend money to work with those contractors. But if you do, you can spend two bucks to pick one of your existing workers up and move them to a different facility. Basically, I can pay overtime to get my run red worker to work again. I could also spend two bucks to do construction. Now, why would I ever do that? Because there might be a situation where, oh, I really want to construct, but all the construction spaces are full. Well, I can come to the contractors, pay some money, and then keep constructing. Uh, I could do that. And then finally, I could spend some money to do a triple fabrication, which is something that you do once you've got some ore on hand. You'll be seeing this sooner than later. The main thing we try to fabricate in this game is more of these um, asteroid mining machines. The other thing we fabricate is the alloy that we need to build. Oh, shoot. Folks, I'm a big fat cheater. Always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. I was so wrapped up in the fact that when I built this, I got that free little bonus. I forgot the other stuff that happens. A uh, new building comes out, and it's another ice mine. Okay, I'm glad I got this, because, hey, there's plenty of ice mines to go around. There's only one ice lab. So this should have refilled as soon as I went. And I had to pay for this. Remember, I had to pay one ceramics, and I had to pay the one alloy I had. And there is a little reminder over here on the construction yard that says, hey, whenever you construct, um, you get one influence with the council for every alloy you spend. So, as a little side benefit, I'm even more influential with the council over here now, and I might be able to call in a favor later, uh, depending on how it goes. Anyway, I'm sorry, I should have done all that last turn. Paulo noted it in the Klingon subtitles, so this is why you always want to turn them on. But anyway, so we're on to my next turn now. I'm coming over here, and I'm spending two of my precious four space bucks, my credits, to tell one of my existing workers to go work someplace else. And so, Red, come over here. Use that ice mine. Now, to use it, I got to pay two more bucks, but that gives me two ore, one ceramic, 
and one ice. Plus, I got one energy passively when I first built it. So, you may notice now, folks, that um, if I had any more money, I could come over here again, and I could uh, spend two more bucks to have red, come back over here, and start building up some more energy so I could do some more research. Now, I'm broke, but I think I've got a plan for that. And now, in the meantime, Jen has been planning this for a while. She's going to launch, which means she, again, she hasn't used any of her leaders yet. She's entirely relying on the common crew. She is, I'm sorry, not, uh, it's not a blue, it's a gray. She's going to take one gray worker and tr fire up her launch site. So let's take a closer look at a launch site. And when she does this, uh, she gets two ore. And again, if she wants to spend ice, she can get two more. And she doesn't have to spend ice because she's the ice queen. So she's going to get four ore and she is going to launch, provided she actually had something to launch. And we both did right from the get-go. So Jen gets a one, two, three, four ore. She is ore rich. And, and she didn't have to pay ice to get it. And now, launch! <laughs> Off it goes. And remember... Let's go ahead and zoom in on the asteroid field. This zone and this zone are free to get to. Doesn't cost any extra. Jen could land in any of these spots, get the points, and get the resources. And you get the resources right now, and you will get those resources at the beginning of every year for the rest of the game. Um, so we got two more years. So if Jen lands here, that is four ore she gets now, four more on year two, and four more on year three. That's 12 ore. And with all that ore, that's a lot more landers she could build and a lot more alloys she could build. So that was her original plan. But now she's thinking that, hey, I get an ice discount. Maybe I should go a little farther afield. And what she needs to think about is, remember folks, at the beginning of the next year, everything is going to rotate counterclockwise. So these ones that it would cost, well, she can get to these for free because she has a one ice discount. It costs one ice to go to either of these first ones. It would cost two ice to get to this one that's on the far side. This one's coming in. This will be here next year. This one will be out of reach and very expensive. So if Jen wanted to land on one of those, now would be the time to do it because it wouldn't cost her any extra ice to get over to those. But if she wants to spend more ice with a discount, she could get to the middle ring. Now, I should say, by the way, folks, everybody... Uh, as part of setup, we have this little resource tracker. We have our corporate headquarters, which is a place that we can always send as many of our leaders as we want to get basic resources if we need them. If we, But this is like, ah, if I've got nothing better to do, I'll come over here. But there's always better things to do out on the main board. But we're also supposed to have a third board, which is just supposed to slot in like this. But I'm low on space, table space. So I left off the side. This is a little reminder of how much it costs to jet around. It costs one ice to cross the dotted lines and get into those outers. It costs three ice to cross the line to get to the middle, and then it would cost six ice to get to the inner. Uh, you know, the, all these ones, which are worth up to 13 points for grabbing those asteroids. So if Jen had nine ice minus one, she could say, oh, I came in here and I just jumped right up to that one and scored the maximum 13 points. She wants resources right now. I think Jen is going to spend one, two ice instead of the normal three to cross the line and land over here at Melpomenin and get four points instead of one. One, two, three, four. Immediately get two ice back. So this is practically free and get an energy. And so this is going to be generating ice because she's the ice queen now, but she won't be for always. So, Jen will get that income two more times over the rest of the game she has successfully launched. And don't forget, because of Jen's research, when she launches, she can get an ice, a ceramic, a power, or two more uh, ore. And I think she's going to take the ceramics for reasons that will become clear soon. All right. Um... I was thinking maybe more ore since she didn't end up going again in the ore squad. I mean, if this rotates away, this still won't cost very much in the next year to get to. Whereas um, this would have cost to move up and over. So Jen figured she should grab that quick. Plus, this is inner middle ring is going to move two spaces. It would have been way over here. Way too expensive to get to. So Jen figured she should grab that while the grabbing was good. She really liked that one. Okay, we're back to me. Back to my three leaders. Um, and I still got four places to work. And now here's the deal, folks. You know what I like to do. You know what I've spent my R&D on. I want to build. I'm here to build more stuff. So let's build a second facility. And here's the deal. Because, remember, when 
I um, build the second facility, I will immediately get the passive income of that ability. I'm looking here at this trading office because that will immediately give me two coins. Oh shoot! But to build it, I need two alloys. And it's, uh, I, 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 I have the ceramics, but I need two alloys. By the way, those two alloys will get me more um, influence over here that will pay off later. So okay, I'm not going to build yet because I need to get more alloy. How do you do that? I'm glad you asked. You grab one of these, I guess the blue are kind of engineers, and or maybe the blue are the blue collars, and the gray are the engineers, and the red are the scientists. I'm sure this is all stated in the rule book. By the way, folks, um, a really interesting thing about the development of this game, they actually had a real, if I recall correctly, astrophysicist um, for doing research to make sure they were as accurate to the real world um, future science as possible with this game, which is very, very cool. Anyway, so I'm going to take Mr. Blue over here here, Mr. Blue Skies, and um, when you act, when you go to the main factory, you get a ceramic. You can get additional ceramic if you want to pay precious ice, and then you can do two fabrications and a third fabrication again if you want to spend more ice. And I am going to fabricate some alloy so that I can build this trading office, so that I can get the coins, so that I can pay this guy to come back over here and get me more research. That's kind of what I'm thinking. We'll see how things evolve, um, but I would like to get more use out of my one lonely red because I've got two red buildings. Although, remember, um, I uh, well, I don't have to worry. I don't have another blue building to send to. I've got Jen cannot use this green. Jen hasn't built any buildings, so the best she could do is she could grab this blue and then she's got to start using her leaders eventually. Okay, and in the meantime, she's giving me first dibs on everything. So that was my turn. I um, ran the factory, which... Oh, wait, no. I, I, all right, so I get one ceramic. Yeah, I'll get a second ceramic. And um, hmm, I will go on ahead and spend an ice to do um, one, two, three. So I spent two ice to get two ceramics and do three fabrication actions. So once again, if we look at this little cheat sheet we've got, these are the things we can fabricate. With two ore, you can make alloy. With an ore, a ceramics, and a power, you can make another mining lander. I get to make three things, right? So let's make one, two, three, or I'm sorry, or, 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 I, was, I was a four, I was a four ore. One, two. So that is two alloy. That's all the alloy I need to be able to build that trading office. I can make one more, but I'm out of ore. Oh shoot, I'm out of ore. If I still had one ore, I would spend the ore and one of each and build myself a second lander. And I would eventually use that, but you know what? Okay, I don't have enough, so I did not spend that last little bit of ice to do another fabrication because I did not have enough resources. So there we go. So I've got these. Next turn, I will build that and wait till you see how it happens, folks, because there's a very, very cool thing with the way you don't always build new buildings. Sometimes you upgrade existing buildings, but that will be on my next turn. And if you'd like to see that, well, go on ahead, folks, and hit that I up in the top right corner screen to go to the extended gameplay, where um, we will finish out this year and, pl and play some of year two as well. You will see trade. You will see Jen starting to use her leaders. You will see buildings being upgraded. You will see more launches. You will see influence being flexed. You might even see us committing to long-term improvement projects, all kinds of stuff. Or if you just want to hear what Jen and I thought of the game, you can also hit that I or follow the links in the show notes to go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, a four, a three, a two, a one.